Action. Let us talk about revaluation of assets and liabilities. What we need to understand here is why do we need to revalue the assets and liabilities when the partner is admitting into the business? That is an important concept one has to understand. I'll give you with a simple example. Let us say A and B are doing the existing business for the last five years. So when they started the business, they purchased land and building for 1 lakh. Five years back, they purchased land and building for 1 lakh. After five years, they have decided to expand their business and they wanted to bring C as a new partner into the business. Now they have decided to bring C as a new partner into the business. Now, before C admit into the business, they wanted to revalue this land and building. Why? Five years back, the market value or the purchase value of that you know, land and building is 1 lakh. Whereas today, at the time of admission, the market value of this land and building is around 5 lakhs. Today the market value is increased. Today if I sell the same land and building, I am going to get 5 lakhs. So that means there is an increase of 4 lakhs of this particular asset. Now imagine, after C admit into the business, and if they do not revalue this asset, if they keep maintaining the same 1 lakh, what will happen? Let us say after a year or two of C admission, they have decided to close the business. That time what will happen? They have to sell this you know, asset. When they sell that asset, maybe after C's admission of one year or two years, they might realize 7 lakhs by selling that asset. Let us assume that. Now what will happen? C will expect share from this profit of 6 lakhs. The market value was 1 lakh. Sorry, uh, the cost of the you know, asset was 1 lakh. The market value is 7 lakhs. Now the difference is 6 lakhs. The 6 lakhs, C will also expect profit because you sold this asset after C's admission. Then A and B will think, this asset was undervalued by us 5 years back for 1 lakh. Now, we are selling that asset for 7 lakhs and the incremental value whatever we got for 6 lakhs, we are bound to give the share to C. Why should I give? So, what they do is, to avoid this incremental benefit to be given to C, they revalue that asset before the admission of C. So from there, if there is an incremental value, that can be given to the C. But at the time of admission, they have to revalue and see what is the market value of this asset. The market value of that asset was 5 lakhs. When before admitting C. So before admitting C, the market value is 5 lakhs. Incremental is 4 lakhs. That 4 lakhs will be distributed between A and B. And it will be adjusted in balance sheet with this value. You get my point? So from here onwards, C admitted. If there is an increment over and above 5 lakhs, all the three will take the benefit. But before C's admission, whatever incremental cost they are getting here, that incremental benefit 
has to be given to only old partners. That is the reason why these existing partners, what they do is, when they have decided to admit a new partner, they revalue their assets, they revalue their liabilities and whatever benefit they get out of revaluation, that will be distributed to the existing partners only. And also, the adjusted assets and the liabilities will be disclosed in the balance sheet. That has to be done. Because if you do not do that, the incremental benefit tomorrow has to be given to C as well. That is the reason why we do the revaluation of assets and liabilities before the admission. I hope you guys are clear now. Now, when we do the incremental, sorry, when you do the revaluation of assets, we need to record those journal entries as well. How do we record those journal entries? When there is an increase in asset, what entry I book? When there is a decrease in asset, what entry I book? When there is an increase in liability, what entry I book? A decrease in liability, what entry I book? These are the things we need to learn now. When there is an increase in asset, asset is a debit balance. If the value is increased, the debit balance will increase because of which we are debiting the asset account. Please remember, when you debit, why you need to ask a question, why am I debiting this? When you credit, you need to ask a question, why am I crediting this? If you know the fundamental reason behind debiting and crediting, you will never forget these journal entries. So, why am I debiting asset here? Because asset value is increased. Asset is a debit balance. If I need to increase the debit balance, I need to debit again. That is the reason I am debiting asset account. Why am I creating revaluation? Revaluation is a nominal account. Because of the incremental cost in asset, they are getting a benefit out of it. That is the profit for them. So, revaluation account is a nominal account. All expenses and losses to be debited in revaluation account and all incomes and gains are to be credited in revaluation account. This asset increment is a benefit, income. So, revaluation account has to be credited as per nominal account. That is the reason why I credited revaluation account here. Clear? Next, for decrease in asset. As I said previously, asset is a debit balance. But asset value has come down, reduced. Because of which, debit has to be credited. If you want to reduce the asset value, since asset is a debit balance, if you want to reduce it, you need to credit it. That is the reason you credited asset account here in case of decrease. Why I debited revaluation account? Decrease in asset is loss to the business. All expenses and losses are to be debited as per nominal account. Revaluation is a nominal account. Revaluation is a nominal account. So, Decrease in asset is a loss. So, loss has to be debited in revaluation account. Hence, I debited revaluation account debit here. Clear? Increase in liability. I have already liability. My liability is increased. Liability is what balance? Liability is a credit balance, right? If the liability credit balance is, is supposed to be increasing now, so, if you want to increase the credit balance, you have to again credit it. That is the reason why we credited liability again. Why I debited revaluation here? When there is an increase in liability, that is loss for me. The liability would have been increased because of additional expenditure. My liability would have been increased because of additional expenditure. That additional expenditure has to go to revaluation account. So, expenses and losses are supposed to be debited in revaluation account as per nominal account principle. So, liability increase is additional expenditure. Hence, revaluation account has to be debited. Decrease in liability. Why I need to debit the liability? 
when there is a decrease in liability. Liability is a credit balance. If this liability is reduced, I need to credit this liability, sorry, debit this liability. That is the reason the liability account is debited. Let me repeat again. Liability is a credit balance. This liability has to be reduced now, decreased. If credit has to be decreased, I need to debit that. That is the reason I debited. So, why a credited revaluation? Next question. If the liability is decreased, your expenditure is also reduced. That means it is a benefit. So, it is profit or income or gain. So, expenses and losses are to be debited, incomes and gains are to be credited as per nominal account. This is the benefit. So, revaluation account has to be credited. That is the reason revaluation account is created here. So, these are the important entries we book when we do the revaluation of assets and liabilities. And one more point what we need to understand here is, there could be sometimes some of the assets and liabilities wouldn't have been accounted at all before admission of the new partner. So, those assets are called unaccounted assets. Those liabilities are called unaccounted liabilities. These unaccounted assets and unaccounted liabilities are also to be recorded before admission of the partner. Why? Otherwise, tomorrow there will be several questions from the new partner. Why you cannot give me the share in unaccounted assets and liabilities? So, old partners or existing partners are to be very careful before admission of the partner. They have to identify what are those unaccounted assets and liabilities and they need to bring into the business. Let us say if there is an unaccounted asset, if they want to bring in to the business, what entry you are supposed to do? Asset is there, asset is a debit balance, but it has not been accounted. So, your assets will increase, right? So, you need to again debit it. So, unaccounted asset should be debited. This will be, be benefit to the business, right? So, revaluation account has to be credited. So, revaluation account to be credited. This is for unaccounted asset. Same way, unaccounted liability has to be accounted. Liability has not been accounted so far. Now, it has to be accounted. Liability is a credit balance. You have to increase that. So, liability should be credited. Because liability is not accounted previously, now you are accounting, that will increase the expenditure as well. So, revaluation account has to be debited. But we call it as unaccounted liability here. So, this is, these are the two entries we are supposed to record when there are unaccounted assets and liabilities. After doing this, what we are supposed to do is, we have to prepare the revaluation account and see whether we got the profit or loss. If there is a profit, the profit has to be distributed to the old partners. So, when there is a profit in revaluation, revaluation account has to be debited. Why revaluation has, account has to be debited when there is a profit? Revaluation account is a nominal account. When there is a profit, revaluation account will show a credit balance. To distribute that, you have to debit that. So, revaluation account is debited and partner's capital account credited. Existing partners. Existing partner's capital account has to be credited. When there is a loss, opposite entry. Partner's capital account, debit, revaluation account, credit. Why? Why credit revaluation? When there is a loss, revaluation account would be showing a debit balance. The debit has to be distributed to the partners. To distribute the debit, you have to credit the revaluation. That is the reason revaluation account is created. Obviously, partners' capital will be reduced 
to the extent of the loss. That is the reason you are debiting partner's capital account. So partner's capital account, when I say partner's capital, it is existing oblique old. Old partner's capital account debit and revaluation account credit. These are the important entries we are supposed to prepare when we do the revaluation of assets and liabilities. I hope you guys are clear.